Your Honor. I signed the court order. I should not be spared seeing it carried out. Come on! Run! How could they live like this? It's all him, sir. Old Sonny Bane. Like he was under a spell. How could they live like this? Jail still is that your kindness? She's an innocent child. She's a bane child. A butcher like all her kin. It's in her blood, it's in her soul. You've seen the bodies yourself. You have children, Judge. A daughter. You want her sharing a schoolroom with this devil spawn? Round up the rest without violence. They will stand trial. say she's one of them, no matter what you say. They said I was a fair man, so they installed me here. But I'm only fair as long as I agree with them. I'm not part of this system anymore. I don't belong here. It's hard to blame them, sir. Folks are scared to sleep while a bane child lives. They want her to hang. Coming for her. Stole them. Katie. Katie. for two and then disappears before he can lift a finger. Why am I paying him? Because your heart is too big. I've given up trying to find good help. Well, quit worrying and go meet the train. If your new clerk gets a glimpse of our frozen little town, he might not stop. There's a lot to be done. Mm. I'll just wait till spring. Some sheep, a couple of cows. I'll find Jerry and we'll finish the pigs. There will be an Easter ham. Now go. Make a good impression. Where's my Eddie? Wish me luck. The young man from Edinburgh arrives today. A real law clerk. What about the pigs? Katie has it all under her thumb. Good luck.
you seen Mary? No. Are you sure? Do you want me to look for her? She was here at breakfast, but then she vanished. At breakfast? I'll go find her. Harry, and don't use Mary as an excuse to avoid your chores. Saved me again. Well, you should be more careful. <laughs> yes. What have you been doing? You're a mess. You dawdling along, daydreaming again, I suppose. I don't want you wandering around the bush by yourself. Yes, Mother. <laughs> Look at you. Well, if it isn't, the lovely Miss Sonia Johannesson. Uncle, get the apple box. You do that for a friend. Hold this. Thank you, madam. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Judge Mackay? Stuart Ross, sir, at your service. Oh, Ross, could you give me a hand? Aye. Uh, thank you. Yes. Now, good to meet you. Yeah. Come around the front. here don't lock their doors but I've got my files not that anything ever happens here beyond trespassing claims the odd petty theft well, I'm really glad to see you Ross I can use your help <laughs> I'm grateful for the chance sir what did you think of Halifax a bit like home the, uh, the city was fine. But the school? Well, it's no crime to have to take the bar exam twice. And George McLeod says you were the smartest young man ever to notch his name in Edinburgh Tower. <laughs> Thank you. So, what do you think? It's, um, smaller than I expected. It's a slow 80 miles to the next town. Train only comes by here once a week. We're paid in chickens as often as we're paid in cash. If it's not what you expected, I'll understand. No, no. It's... And the living quarters in the back are not large. My parents think this urge to practice law out west will pass. It's not only the law that draws me out west. 
Did you come here to find adventure, sir? Partly, I suppose. And for family reasons. Well, I do intend to stay. If you... Oh, you'll do fine here, Ross. You can tell your family that. This morning. When? I pay dearly for your time. Six full days a week, Mr. Litz. Days beginning at 7 a.m., not 10. Do you understand? Seven. Whoops. Did he get here? Is he going to stay? Is he smart? That and better. He's an idealist. He'll work hard. Which cases are you going to give him? Something simple. We don't want to scare him away. What about the Wilkinson case? The sheep? Hmm. I want to save that for myself. The old man hates my bloody guts. Imagine what he'd do if he knew about me and Mary. I wonder what he'd do. What would he do? was you and me. It's pretty little Katie. That's a daughter. But not really. Come on, Katie. Don't. You think you're better than me? Not to them, you're not. Looks like you don't need me. Maybe you didn't need to hire Jerry. Oh, she's competent. A son that never was. Next thing you'll know, she'll inherit this place. Not much of a prize, mind you. How's the new clerk? Nice boy. Plans to be admitted to the bar this year. Really? Is he attractive? Huh? Fine looking. Bright. An idealist. He'll make a fine friend for Katie. Katie? What do you mean, Katie? A handsome, unmarried lawyer. A friend is what I was thinking. This is meant for Mary. You may have just had your future son-in-law. Yes. Well, I'll be giving Katie a hand to finish up. Come on. 
Nottingham. You know what time it is. I've been warning everyone in the area. Well, you've been drinking, Bert. Well, whatever it is, they're, they're going to find out. A, a little girl's been killed on the edge of town. The Johannesson child. Sonia? Was it an accident? Wolves. They must have dragged her from the yard or she wandered off. To... They tore her up. Unfortunately, the town dogs got into the act. We had to shoot them. Oh, my Lord. Just a warning, everyone. Uh, we got a sick animal out there. Just lock everything up tight. Wolves didn't attack people. No, they don't usually. I was checking that all the windows are latched. I'll do that. I've been thinking about Sonia. I know. And her mom. Greta's heart is not good. Losing a child must be the worst kind of hell. Must be nice in a way. To have a mother worry over you. Well, we worry. Your wife hates me. Katie. But I wonder, if my mother had lived... No, stop it, Katie. Don't go further with this. They must have been poor, 
desperate people to have had to steal to stay alive. And if they killed someone during a theft, well, it doesn't mean they were heartless. It doesn't mean that they didn't love me. What has been? Is not important. You're my girl. Isn't that enough? I've done my best to give you a good life. Oh, I know, but... Off to bed. That's good, Jimmy. Is mine as good as Rose's? Yes. But you're gonna have to work extra hard at the piano to get as good as your sister. She can have it. Mrs. Mackay has the only piano for 200 miles. You're lucky to have the chance. It's not the piano I hate. Oh. I try, but I still get my knuckles rubbed every lesson. Sometimes I wish I was like Sonia. What? She doesn't have to take lessons. Oh, no, look at your hands. She'll kill me. Your Mozart. Perfection. Nearly perfect. Now, Timmy. You've been working so hard. You've been a wonderful lad. I think you deserve the day off. Yes, the day off. Katie, can I speak with you for a moment? Now wait for Katie. You shouldn't be walking alone. But we always walk alone. But with Rose around. Why don't you show Rose what we've been doing? Come on, Sam. I'll be back in a minute. You're very good with them. A sweet man. No, thank you. I'm sorry about the blue dye. Oh, never mind that. You do have such a way with children. Mm. You're very fond of those two, aren't you? Yes, I am. Then you'd be very pleased to hear Mrs. Becker's looking for help with Timmy and Rose, and since the sad accident was Sonny... Well, you know I'd be happy to, but with spring coming, I... It would begin immediately. It's um, a live-in position. They're a good family. They must be sick to death of us. But this is my home. I'm sure that's how you see it. There's someone seeing those Becker kids home. Their offer on the farm in Saskatchewan has been accepted. We won't be seeing much more of them. Saskatchewan? you to help you settle. Consider my offer. It may be the best you get. The children are waiting. What's the matter with Katie? Who knows? Have a sweet bun, dear. She doesn't look too happy. You know what makes every young woman happy? A wedding gown. Well, she's not seeing anyone, is she? We could accommodate that. Jerry would make a fine husband for Katie. Jerry? They could go off on their own piece of land and breed fat, grimy children together. That's a disgusting idea. You didn't suggest that to Katie, did you? Of course not. Oh. We're having company for supper. My new clerk. You tell me now at four o'clock? Give me that. There won't be enough for supper.
Okay, off you go. Bye, Kennedy. Goodbye. Goodbye. I thought you were married. Yeah. Don't run away. Hey, I'm sorry about this morning. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going home. If bloody wolf comes near me, I'll blast it to smithereens. Right in the head. What do you say to that? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh, come Don't on, touch. baby, you like it. Don't touch me! No, no! No, no, no! No, no, no! No, no, no! No, no, no! Leave her alone. You'll be sorry. You think you're so smart. Ah! Hello. Wait. Wait. It's about time you showed up. Always lolling about when I need help. Come and help with the table. Katie! Going somewhere? I can't stay. Oh? Not another day. I'm sorry, Mary, but between your mother and Jerry. Jerry? He's an animal. Stay away from him. Katie, you're jealous. Look in his eyes. Flecks of gold, Mary. Look. That's common superstition. Well, I guess it comes naturally to you. Because I'm not the daughter of a judge? Yes, and don't you forget it. Thank you, Mary. Please, come in. Thank you. Come on through, Ross. Hello. Lovely meal, Margaret. Aye, Mrs. Mackay. That's the best I've had in a long time. Brandy, Ross. Yes, please. That Chinook keeps up. Everything will fall. Katie, the windows, then do the barn. Let me help. 
Jerry can do the barn. Where is he? Who knows? Let me help you. He's storming around before supper. Looked as though he'd been in a barroom brawl. He hasn't done a thing all day. Ross. Thank you. Mr. Rost, you should visit our church on Sunday. Mary sings in the choir. Oh. God gave her the voice of an angel. Mother, she'll be doing a solo this week. Won't you, dear? I'll look forward to it. Do you sing, Katie? Like a crow. God has given Katie innumerable gifts, including modesty. Mary plays the piano. Katie baked the pie. You're lucky to have two such beautiful daughters. Katie's also very worldly. She's planning on leaving us soon. What's this about? I'm going to Saskatchewan with the Beckers. Saskatchewan? How nice. When did this come up? I've been considering it for a while. I'm going. That's enough of this? I'm old enough to make my own decisions. For goodness sakes, let her go if she wants. She's not going! get such ideas. What's going on with Katie? Don't worry. I'm sure she'll get over it. You know, William, I've been very happy married to you. Huh. I'm glad. I've taken this on some wild turns. You know, I'd do almost anything for you. I know. You've been a good wife, Margaret. I want Mary to be as happy as we are someday. Don't you? Of course. And why do you overlook Mary for Katie's sake? Oh, Mr. Ross, you're one persistent woman, Margaret. Husband with any sort of prospects is not an easy thing to find, especially in this backwards. Yes, well, Mary has inherited your charm. Don't worry about her. But you favor Katie. You have more concern for her than for your own daughter. Go to sleep. Perhaps more than for me. More affection. That's enough! More passion! Good night. Lock the door. What are you doing in the dark? I couldn't sleep, so I went for a walk. Would you like a cup of tea? No. Were you with Jerry? He didn't show. Timmy, have you seen him? No. Come in. 
He's gone. Since when? Must have tucked him in. Good night. Timmy's missing. What? Five minutes up later, Rolf was sound asleep. Timmy's bed was empty. Timmy's missing. Maybe, maybe he's sleepwalking, or, or, or maybe he's hiding. You know how he likes to play. Yeah, my, my brother has gone to the town for help. Could you? Katie, stay here. I'm going to look for Timmy. We'll take the roadies to here. Yeah. Do you think the wolf's got him? I'll get dressed. Katie, wake up, Jerry. I'm locking myself in my room. Jerry? Jerry? Where's Jerry? He's not back yet. Me too. There's nothing to report. There most certainly is. Go and see Sergeant Allison tonight. I've lived in terror ever since she came to stay under our roof. Oh, Margaret. I haven't slept soundly for years. What's in your mind? Oh, your little darling couldn't do anything wrong, could she? Well, what about the kittens? Bloody and dead the day they're born. Don't be ridiculous. What about the delight she takes in killing the chickens? Now, that's enough, Margaret. Those children were mutilated by wolves. You said yourself the boy was cut open by a knife. The two can't be mistaken. It was dark. It was dark. Maybe I was mistaken. Or could it be, William, the result of your mistake 15 years ago? Kitty? Hmm? Jerry still didn't come back. Go 
go away. Go to sleep. Oh, excuse me. I was looking for the judge. Oh, uh, well, don't go. You're in too early. Mm. I'm on my way to the train station. Oh, so you are going? I have every reason to go. Well, I don't do that. You don't? No. Look, um, I'm having a wee bit of breakfast. Would you like to join me? Do you like bread? Okay. Some tea? Please. Well, I think you're brave. Although, if it were me, I wouldn't be going to Saskatchewan. I'm not going to Saskatchewan. Oh? I want something completely different. Such as? South, maybe. Somewhere warm. Eat up. Did you ever think about Scotland? How could I ever afford to go to Scotland? Well, sometimes I miss it. It smells different, it's the air. Well, you must have kin there still. No. No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, you'd love it. Almost the train. Hello. Good morning. Hello. I came to tell you you're a wonderful man. Goodbye. Well, I'll see you at dinner. Like a surgical incision. It's proof enough for the doctor, it's proof enough for me, William. There's no animal killed him. Or the little girl. 
You tell me what animal cuts with a knife, takes the heart, leaves the rest. Jeremy Litz has been gone from my place since early yesterday. Now, I'm not saying Jerry is a bad boy, but he's not smart either. It's not Jerry I've come about. It's Katie. I've been given some some uh, information. By whom? A note I slipped under my door when I got in this morning. Of course. What's going on? The accusations are a bit boggling, but I have to check everything. Judge Mackay? Katie's family were no good, Ross. Then it's true. Anonymous notes? Katie's family? Is that what you're going on? That's invalid evidence. It's prejudice. Does Katie have a record? No. Then what hard evidence do you have? The victims, they were small enough. Katie could have overpowered them. So your detachment is going to question everyone large enough to overpower a six-year-old girl? I suggest, Sergeant Allison, that you're wasting your time. Now listen here, Mr. Ross. No, you listen to me. Until you have some hard facts, you leave Katie alone. He's right, Bart. You can't judge Katie by her family. I'm going on something stronger than hard facts. What? The fear of this town. Words getting round. New Galloway to his home, his home, his home. One dollar. Katie Bain. I thought they were all hanged. She was innocent, Mr. Ross. Could I ask you to go out to the farm and keep an eye on things till I get back? Right. How much does she know? Nothing. And she must never know. Katie? Could you tell me, please, how far I could get on $25? $25? Well, 18 to Chicago. Mm, Boston. That's a real nice city. What about South? South. Mm, south. Come on, Katie. I'd like to talk to you. Get away, Bart. A few words. I said get away! I've got a duty to enforce the law. You're incompetent. You're a danger to yourself as well. William. You'll live with your actions forever, Bart. You're obstructing justice. What's going on? There's nothing to say. Whatever it is, I'll find out. Katie, that's your family. When people find out who they were, they may not treat you kindly. Because my parents killed a man? But that's what you told me. That's not true? Not entirely. Your grandfather's name was Sonny Bain. He started as a petty thief in Edinburgh. 
A charming man. Very charismatic, so they say. And then something happened to him. Something snapped. He led his family to the Galloway Caves and started his own colony. He was a sick man, Katie. Because he was a thief? That's not something to be proud of, but... They don't hang thieves, Katie. They hung my grandfather, too? All your kin. They hurt people again and again and again. On purpose? It became like a religion to them. He said it would make them powerful if they... If they what? The killings? Yes. The killings. Well, you know all the facts so well. Did you defend them? No. I did not defend them. It's true. Katie couldn't hurt a fly. And while you're busy accusing her, our backs are turned to the real danger. Mother, there's a murderer on the loose. The real danger sleeps in the room next to yours. If we don't do something about it. We may as well slit our own throats to save time. Are you expecting anyone? Are you? Go and see who it is. You go. Are you afraid? Of course not. Then go. I came in through the front door. I wanted to make sure you were all right. I hope I didn't frighten you. Mr. Ross, not at all. You're just in time for lunch. Ah, did uh, Judge Mackay find Katie? He was looking for her. Oh, he was mad with worry. But then he's so devoted to her. Yes, though he seems to forget what a lovely daughter he has in Mary. Ah, thank you. Mary is more lovely than Katie, in the classical sense. Do you know what I mean? I... Mr. Ross, I don't want to beat around the bush. Mary is the kind of young woman that, well, she ties her hair in 20 rags every single night. She cares. Your daughter has fine hair, Mrs. Mackay. Katie's back. You all right? I'm fine. Ross, could you stay over a few days till this blows over? No. There's the hired help quarters in the barn. It's comfortable. But that's for Jerry. Go inside, Matt. We're bolting the door from the outside and locking trouble in. You come with me. about Katie. 
What you talking about? Let go! I'm warning you. I don't know what you're talking about. You're the one who brought that evil creature into this household. I'll make you admit your mistake. The only thing evil here Lovely for Mr. Ross. I don't really care what Mr. Ross thinks. Besides, he only has eyes for Katie. No. She may think she's the center of attention. But just wait. You're the one who people will really look at. Besides, I've seen the way Mr. Ross looks at you. Mother, mm -hmm. did Jerry say anything before he left? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you look lovely? He said nothing? Yes. He said... Goodbye to me. He's going to look for a wife. One who could breed plump, healthy children for him. Why don't you go and clean the quarters in the barn? There's a lovely pair of curtains in the barn. I took them down when Filthy Jerry moved in. Do just fine for a gentleman like Mr. Ross. A woman should show a man how well she can manage a household. Mary. Katie, can I help? Not really. Are you sure? <sighs> I wore this for my first Christmas concert. Look at the lace cuffs. You remember they were from your blue velvet dress. Yes. <laughs> That's the way it always went. From you. To me. No, Katie. Are you afraid of me? No. Yes, Katie. Yes, I am.
Somebody was looking for a quick place to dig a hole. This will be it. And with this thaw, the blood starts to flow again. Jerry. <laughs> Take her inside. Mary? I'm sorry. You killed him. No, Mary, I didn't. I didn't. What do you want me to do? You're the law. You're the judge. Mary to sleep with a glass of brandy. I had one myself. Where's Kitty? In hell, I wish. The doctor took a look at Jerry. It's the same as the children. His heart's been cut out. Ross, could we stand guard in shifts? Aye. So I'll stand the first. The shotgun's on the table. Shells are in the cabinet. The ridiculous charade. He never left them from the first day. Oh, Margaret. You can give me all the excuses in the world for why we left Scotland. You can preach about the justice system until you, you drop. There's only one reason for why we left our home. For the sake of Katie Bain. That's not true. He kidnapped her. Shut up, Margaret. Face facts, William. Your brooding ethics are a hazard. You'd hang her yourself if you could. There has to be balance in the world. If you're to be soft, then I have to be hard. I've left no stragglers in the Bane affair. That's the brandy talking. No, William. It's your wife. And it's about time you considered your family.
We'll go. Huh? You and I together away from here. He needs me. I need you. Margaret's gone mad. It's not safe here for him. It's not safe here for you. We'll take the wagon, tonight. And you go on to Edmonton and wait for me there. And I'll come back and cover our tracks. They won't know we've gone together. They'll be looking for one person. <laughs> Aye! I'll come and get you from the city. And we'll go to Scotland. Together. Scotland? We belong together, Katie. I trust you in my home. You defile my girl and then you try to steal her away. She's not your girl. You're a selfish old man. He killed your parents. He sentenced them to death and kept you for himself. Didn't you? Is that true? Didn't you? Get out! Is it true? Go to the house, Katie. Is it? All I did was care for you. You lied to me! Go to the house. Where's William? He's out, keeping us safe. <laughs> Why won't anyone tell me the truth about my family? Sit down. I have to know! Sit down, and I'll tell you. Your family lived like rats in a cave. They believed they had powers that made them better than anyone else. Powers they replenished by eating human flesh. Oh, yes. So you see, 
You won't be leaving here with Mr. Ross's wedding band on your finger, as you schemed to do. When he knows, when everyone knows, the only band you'll be wearing is a noose around your neck. They say it's like a dog who's eaten fresh killed meat once. The power. They killed dozens. Maybe hundreds of people over 30 years without ever being caught. Many people wondered if maybe there was some truth in their sacrifice. I've wondered. I've been very curious. What do you think, Katie Bain? Was it sweet and succulent? Do you crave it? Home. To Scotland. To family. We've been planning this thing for years. Just like grandfather would have wanted. But when they find the other bodies, We'll have no choice. And the letter I sent to the police after the Becker boy died leaves little doubt. You're guilty. This 
is my home. I am your home. Leave me alone. You're Katie Bain. The others don't understand. We're not like them. I'm not like you. Margaret! <laughs> Katie! Shut up. Katie! Where's Margaret? She's upstairs, resting. Where's Kitty? Why do you care so much for a child who's not yours? Destroyed my family. Now I've come back to destroy yours. The clan. Katie, understand. <laughs> 